Hello, good day to you. Uh, today, on my topic of OpenStack administration, I'll be talking about RabbitMQ in OpenStack. Uh, RabbitMQ is the messaging queue service you know, for OpenStack. Uh, it typically runs on the controller node. Um, so basically, let me show you this picture to basically buttress my point. This is the picture I just saw on the internet. So basically, you see different services of OpenStack. You see Nova, Cinder, Swift, or Nova Scheduler. All of them, you know, they talk, you know, to a central piece, which is the queue server for messaging, you know. So on this uh, queue server, it can be RabbitMQ, it can be Cupid, it can be 0MQ, but the most, by default actually, I think the most common you see is RabbitMQ. So basically that's why I just want to briefly talk about on RabbitMQ in OpenStack, you know, how you can get to know RabbitMQ and how you can, you know, basically learn one or two things about it. So basically, uh, what I will do, I will go to my control controller node. So this is my controller node. Uh, I will become root on this node. Uh, so ordinarily, I can type rabbitmq ctl. So rabbitmq ctl is the, the command you, know, you use to you know interact with rabbitmq for a lot of things. So if I type up thank you CTL status, uh, a lot of information are going to come, you know, for me. So this is like the rabbit MQ of my OpenStack setup. So uh, rabbit MQ was developed with Erlang. Erlang, this is Erlang our programming language. So it's, you know, handles the messaging, you know, the queues, the queues messages from different services. So basically this status gives you information about the RabbitMQ, you know, uh, about what's going, basically about the usage, you know, things like the memory usage, the alarms, uh, disk file descriptor. So um, that might be of good information to you. Another thing you can do is if you have a this command may be good if you have a cluster, you know, if you are working in a cluster of RabbitMQ, maybe uh three cluster because typically in a production environment or uh, this queue server, you know, as you can see, it is a very critical piece of the cloud. If this server the queue server fails. The cloud, you know, fails. So, uh, the it has to have some high availability design. So, and that is done with the cluster. So, maybe, uh, three, maybe three nodes of RabbitMQ in a cluster. So, if you have a cluster, you can use this command cluster status to get information about those details. But <laughs> I only have one. Uh, one rabbit mq and if you want to look at the queues you know in the rabbit mq um the queue are like uh the like the pipe through which messages flows so these are like queues that are ready made you know to carry messages as you can see if you can see my screen properly you see queues related to eat engine uh the cqs if you scroll down let's look for that one dhcp alarm notifier so queues for different purposes you know are uh, in the rabbit mq so um another command that may be of benefit is plugin because rabbit mq actually has you no know, works with plugin so if I do RabbitMQ plugins list, it's going to list for me all the plugins available and I can enable the plugin that I want. There's actually a particular interesting plugin called 
RabbitMQ management. So let us enable that plugin. So the, the RabbitMQ management, uh, what it does is basically to, uh, it, it basically gives us a dashboard. You know, it gives us like a dashboard where we can go to and see, you know, how RabbitMQ is performing. So I can do RabbitMQ plugin enable and uh, I want to enable the RabbitMQ management. So you see, it says it enabled it. It's actually enabled some other plugins, but uh, I'm most concerned about the RabbitMQ management. So, and once we enable this uh, plugin, it, it is going to start listening on a particular port. So let's look at the port. We can use lsof i 15672. So you see, this port is the port you know for the web or uh, interface. So where we can see uh, the RabbitMQ uh, operation. So let me go to my dashboard and uh, my browser. So and I will navigate to my uh, I will navigate to my this is the address IP address of my controller node and I will have to browse to that port number 15672 so you see the port the this is the RabbitMQ dashboard so uh, that's the RabbitMQ dashboard and uh, the login the login is actually the default login is guest so guests the username is guest the password is guest so let's log in into the rabbit mq or oh, it's guests and the password is also guest let's log in so we are logged in into the rabbit mq so this is the rabbit mq for my open stack so like i said you're going to see things like connections channels exchanges queues queues is actually one of the like the first class or citizen of RabbitMQ. so you see a lot of queues you see queues related to cinder cinder is the block store block storage service you see queues related to dhcp you see queues related to l3 agent you see queues related to load balancer load balancing as a service so there are a lot of queues so um other things you can see if you go to the overview you'll be able to see you know the performance or uh, if there's an alarm you're going to see it on this dashboard and the configuration file this is important the config file is located is located in this path so we, let's take a look at the uh, at the config file actually um so on my controller node if i go to this part so this is a configuration file for the rabbit mq so uh, I, I won't be doing anything in the config file i'm just showing you and i'm just showing you uh this demonstration briefly is just to uh, intimate you with you know rabbit mq in OpenStack so that this is this is one of the most critical part piece of OpenStack. If this service fails, the OpenStack fails entirely. So um, let me actually uh, do something. I, I'm going to kill this uh, RabbitMQ. Then I will try to do something on my OpenStack dashboard. So this is my. OpenStack dashboard. I'm going to so on this. So if I do ps e dash ef and grab for rabbit mq rabbit mq. So this is the process that runs rabbit mq. I'm actually going to kill this process so that let's see what effect it has on the on the OpenStack. So I killed the process. So let's go here and let's try to launch an instance. Let's see what happens. Uh, I click launch an instance. 
let's give it test uh, test yeah wherever uh, put from image default uh, this yeah so let me see let me make sure that it is not running okay the rap temp queue is dead it is not running so let me try to launch the instance and let's see what happens so this is a demonstration to see you know how important the rap temp queue is so as you can see it's actually take taking <laughs> longer than uh expected because i'm sure it is waiting it is waiting you know if we look at some of the queues okay yeah we, we already killed the process sorry we can't look at this dashboard again so uh, but you see nothing is happening because oh uh, the rabbit mq is dead you know uh, so this demonstration is just to show you how important RabbitMQ is in uh, OpenStack. But you know, not uh, RabbitMQ. Like I said, it is not the only uh, you know, service. Or it is not the only software that can be used to provide queuing services. You know, there are others like Cupid and uh, ZeroMQ. But RabbitMQ seems to be the most popular. So, like you see, nothing is actually happening. So, uh, I'm sure at at some point it's going to fail and uh, tell us, yeah, it can't get because it, it can't get the message through. So everything is failing. So that is how important RabbitMQ is. So that is all I want to show you in this video and um, if you have any comments, questions, let me know. I hope you learned one or two things in this video. Uh, thank you for watching. See you in some other video. Take care. Bye.